sports. So it's not an overstatement to say this is the biggest sporting event on the planet. Just how many people will likely be captivated for the next few weeks? Well, the last World Cup in 2006 had a cumulative audience of 26 billion viewers wow. worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> By comparison, the 2008 Summer Olympics had less than 5 billion. So it truly is the biggest sporting event in the world. Okay, it's the giant of events. And uh, obviously the super fans know everything and they're all ready and they're just, they're, they're going to be watching every minute of it. For the uninitiated, help guide us through who are the teams that we should be watching? Well, the, the seeded teams in the tournament are the big teams, the, the traditional powers, the likes of Brazil, mm. Spain, Argentina, England, Holland, Germany, Italy. Those are the teams that, that most people people suspect we'll, we'll get to the, the later stages of the tournament. Uh, the tournament itself is broken up into uh, eight groups of four teams each. Uh, they play a round-robin system. The top two teams from each group then move on to the knockout stage, the round of 16. Those winners go to the quarterfinals, then the semifinals, and then the last two standing contest the final on July 11th. So even if you don't have a team that is near and dear to your heart, I think uh, everyone can be treated to some of the most amazing soccer we've ever seen, courtesy of some of the superstars. Take me through who these superstars are, the ones that, uh, whatever, you really need to pay attention to these guys because they're extraordinary. Well, the top players in the world are going to be at the World Cup. Mm. And, you know, you start talking about the likes of uh, Lionel Messi from Argentina, who's the, the reigning FIFA World Player of the Year. Cristiano Ronaldo right. from Portugal, very, very talented player. Uh, Wayne Rooney from England, Kaká from Brazil, the entire Brazilian team for that matter, very, very gifted, very, very talented. So there's going to be all kinds of, uh, you know, players on display for people to follow and to show and the great thing about Canada is I think everyone has a link to another country around the world and mm. despite the fact that Canada hasn't qualified for the World Cup themselves everyone in the country will have a rooting interest and will be uh, tying themselves back to their own heritage perhaps the heritage of the grandparents or those before them and supporting their home nation that way no it's so true there there is a connection there somewhere for everyone and as I say I think it's easy to fall in love with just watching it because um, you know the athletes don't wear pr protective gear. You can see their talent, and it, there, there's just something that makes you understand why it's the beautiful game. For you, because this must be, for you, everything, right? I, when, when an event like this comes along, uh, you're watching the best of the best, and, and these are players that are playing because they're dedicated to their country. Uh, for you, what's the dream matchup? The dream matchup, I think, you know, if, if you're looking at the top teams in the world, probably the number one, number two ranked teams in the world right now, Brazil and Spain. If we can see those two teams meet at any point in the tournament, whether it's in the final or not, uh, I think that's going to be the dream matchup that people will be looking for. Right. But the beautiful thing about, about football <laughs> or soccer, as we call it, is that everyone feels that way about their own country. So English fans want to see England get to the final. Italian fans want to see Italy get to the final. It goes that way through all the tournament with all the teams. But there's some great matchups even in the group stages, the group of death, group G, Brazil against Portugal, right. Brazil against the Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast against Portugal, some great games coming forward uh, on June 12th, England play against the United States, mm -hmm. that rematch of the 1950 World Cup <laughs> where the, uh, the United States actually beat the English. So there's some very, very uh, compelling matches in the group stages and something for everyone to get excited about. Yeah, so much to look forward to. Jason, great to see you. I know we're talking next hour. We're going to be taking a closer look at injuries, so look forward to that. Thanks. Thanks.